Okay. Uh, I don't see it. Okay, yeah, now I see it. Yep. I can see it. Okay, let's see. Hmm. How do you see your viewers? This is gonna be annoying. I can hear everything you say twice. <laughs> no, no, just mute it. Just mute it at that point. Like three view. Ah, there we go. The viewer counts. There we go. Well, welcome everybody. I'll just wait. You know. I think this. Uh, I said so now like ten people would come. Yeah. We can wait. Oh, and uh, there is an attendance assignment that you need to do. So I'll put that here. Just to, like check if you're here or not, you know? So attendance in the chat, like. Yep. And I'll probably empty my recycle bin. Okay. Oh no, we're back down to three. All right. Well, remember, do your attendance, kids. Zero responses. Very disappointing. Wait, why don't we just get in a Discord call? Because Discord only streams at 720p, and you can't record the streams. Yeah, you can't read it. You can't read anything. In yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pain. And we want to post it on YouTube as well, so it's more convenient this way. Eight people. Um, so we're, gonna, we're also going to start posting it on our website, uh, and then you can uh, go over there, and it'll be like a transcript and everything. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, I'm not... <laughs> yeah, that's too complicated for me. Okay, one person. That's good. Attendance. Make sure to do your attendance here. Um, that's... It's... it's Oh, 11 people. Wow, we're famous. Okay. Oh, that's more than actually what we were expecting. Yeah. I assume there's people who see... No, because there's people who can, like, see your status and see that you're streaming, though, so that... That could also be a reason. So uh, we'll wait a few more minutes until we have the good amount of people who are, you know, who've taken attendance or who are watching the stream in a way. So yeah. Who's wow? <laughs> okay, five responses. Okay, so I'll start while you guys are filling out attendance. So, actually, wait, let me let's wait one more minute and then start all right so welcome to the town view machine learning and AI club you know um, yeah just welcome we're gonna go over setting up anaconda and like a general course overview today and maybe you know maybe we'll start the basic Python course you know 
So we'll see what happens. But yeah. Um, so first step is going to be installing Anaconda. Ugh. So Anaconda.com. Yes, uh, it's going to be very hard to do that, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, so yeah, Anaconda.com. Go to individual edition. Download. And then download the 64 bit if you're on Windows. I'm assuming you're on uh, Windows. If you're on Mac OS, download this one. And if you're on a Chromebook, um, just use Replit to follow along. So I already have the file downloaded here. So once you guys are ready, where are loud keyboard clicks and terrible mic quality? Who knows? You have to wait until next week because we're switching the people out. <laughs> yes. All right. So, um, yeah, I agree. And, you know, this is just preference. I'm installing it for... I already have it installed, so I'm not just going to install it right now. But, you know, if you don't have admin access, then just don't do it. Yeah. Okay, well. Also, whenever you do it, uh, I think you want to probably hit the... Uh, so, if you don't have admin, then yeah, don't, just do the chest me. Yeah, and I can't... I don't really want to replace my installation because I don't want to install it all over again, but let's just say I'm doing this. And uh, if you add it to path, that's... It's, it's more convenient. You know, it doesn't really make yeah, much of a difference to add, either way, but it's more convenient oh, if you add it to path. Add it to path. You'll be able to um, do it from your CM. You'll see in a second, whatever mm -hmm. you do. We'll cover some of the basic commands. Yeah. So add to path. Don't 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 pay attention to this. Then install. Shoot shoot shoot. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, I'm so done. Okay. Well, I'm installing it again. That's nice. <laughs> so this is going well. Let's see how the attendance is going. Ooh, seven responses. Very nice. I'm using Rock OS. Very nice. So, if you have any questions about anything or have any problems, you can ask it in general chat or just the Twitch chat. Either one works. I have them both in different tabs so I can look at both of them. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Rahi has the Indian accent covered for the tutorials. <laughs> All right, cool. So, you just want to finish. You don't need to do these, and you finish. Alright, so now I'm going to open Anaconda. Free subs, yes. Alright, so this is what it should look like. And what we're going to be using is uh, Jupyter Notebook. Actually, no, before that, there are a few packages that we do need to install. And it's taking a while. There we go. So, the way we install packages, actually, wait, wait, yeah. Let me know if you're done with these steps until now, and then we can cover installing packages. Just uh, let us know in the chat if you're done with that. Let's see, wait. 
here just pip well um why are you using yeah I know but everybody's using Windows and it's simpler I don't want to use a virtual machine because that's going to be a pain I am nice nice okay <laughs> Well, yeah, you'll, you'll have to live with Windows every other week. Yeah, I don't, I'm just talking. If you see someone in chat, it's Rahi. Um, so yeah, okay. I'm assuming you guys are done. So, what you want to do is, we need a few packages right, to... For a lot of things in, for a lot of things we plan to do in the future, not this class because we're just doing basic Python today, but for a lot of things we plan to do, you're gonna need a few packages. So how you install packages is really simple. You go pip install, and you can just install the packages, like numpy. We don't need to use that, but yeah, requirement already satisfied because I already have it, but yeah. So if you ever need to install that, it's there. Is the stream slow? I am not sure. I mean, I don't know because I'm streaming, but yeah. So, projects. You know what? I'll make a new folder in Jupyter. I'll rename this to meeting one. So, I'll change this to basic Python, Python. Do we, no, we do not have to download any packages yet. I'll go over which packages we do need to download, like once we get there, but you don't need to do anything. I'm just showing you how it's done. Mm, let me check general. Nice, thank you, Johnson. Okay, uh, just let us know in chat or in the Discord uh, whether you're done with that. I don't even have Python download. He isn't. Yeah. No, uh, when you install Anaconda, yeah, you don't need to have Python downloaded. I was a pain, but we need, yeah, 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 we do. Just install it and then launch Jupyter Notebook. Yes, yes, what Rahi sent. Oh, wait, there's a delay in the stream. I just noticed. <laughs> Gotta fix that. Yeah, it's Twitch. It's gonna have a pretty big delay. It's like five seconds. Dang. Okay, yeah. I mean, there has to be some option to, like, make it, you know, less, but that's, that's that kind of sucks. It doesn't matter. Still setting up the base environment. Yeah, no rush. You could use Ethernet, I guess, but, like, that's, uh, I don't know. But you could use Ethernet. I'm already on Ethernet, so it shouldn't be too big of a delay, but I don't know. I'll fix it later. Too late now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay if it's still uh, setting it up for you. Um, while that's working, you know, you can open a replit to follow along if it's taking way too long. So that's always an option because um, I'll start the... Uh, and if you fall if you fall too far behind just remember you can always uh, go back and uh, watch the uh, video once we upload it to YouTube yes we'll put that in resources I think yeah I think we'll, we should just put the link in resources all right well um, okay let's start so this is uh, the beginning of the basic Python course 
and we're going to start with uh, just numerical data types. So if you've already taken Java or you are taking Java right now at school, it's going to be really easy just to follow along. So uh, A is a variable and you're setting it to the value 5. five A is going to have the data type of an integer, which is basically an integer in math. It's just a number without any decimals, you know? Positive or negative number without any decimals. I tried my... Okay, um, yeah, we'll post it on YouTube. Or somebody can type that out. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Well, you can also add different variables together, like B is equal to A plus 3. Yeah. And, okay, if you want to print the, var the value of the variable, you just say print, and then it prints it. So, because the value of A is 5, it's going to print 5. It's pretty simple. And because the value of B is A plus 3, and A is already 5, 5 plus 3 is 8. So, if you say print B, it's going to print 8. Okay. So, that's basically integers. <laughs> Nothing much more uh, complicated to it. And then you can have uh, something like this, where you can have another data type called a float. So you could say, I don't know, C is equal to 1.725. And uh, float is basically just a number, you know, a number with decimals. You can also have, uh, you could also make it so it uh, sets to an integer, but actually no, yeah. This is different from Java because uh, you don't really concretely define each variable. So you can change it to whatever you want. You know, if I change this to one, then this is an integer. But if I make it 1.0, it's gonna be a float. So yes. Oh, yeah, before we go into that, yeah, thanks for reminding me. Okay, before we go into that, there's a basic uh, course overview that we're going to go over. So, basically, this club, uh, we're just going to, we start from the learning basic Python and learning about the packages of, yeah, all right. So, we, we're going to start with basic Python and learning about the different packages you can use for machine learning. And then from there, we'll move on to how you can apply those packages to different uh, machine learning concepts and how you can apply those machine learning concepts to real life data. So if you go to our website, which is uh, townview.ml, or Yes, so if you go to our website, you can see an overview of our course, but you don't really need to because I'm just gonna go over it myself. So, the first section of our course is gonna be basic Python, where we're gonna learn about data types and variables, like we're doing right now. Comparison operators, like if, else, elif, things like that. Uh, loops, while loops, for loops, you know, stuff like that, you know. It's all very basic stuff. And uh, functions, so declarations, built-in functions, and lambda expressions. After that, um, <clears throat> we're going to learn about the package NumPy. So NumPy is a package that's used to create arrays if you really simplify, if you really boil it down. And it's very useful and it's an uh, extremely fast and useful package in machine learning. So that's very important to learn. Afterwards, we're going to uh, learn a package called Pandas, which is more or less built on top of NumPy. And we'll learn about the data frames, which are more complicated and more useful version of those NumPy arrays. So, yes. Um, no, we're not. Uh, yes, so um, then we're going to learn about matplotlib and pyplot. 
which is how you're able to plot the data you get, right, from using these NumPy arrays and pandas data frames. So that is going to be the Python course. And afterwards, we're going to cover some basic machine learning concepts, and we're going to go up in uh, difficulty. Uh, so the first concept we're going to cover is linear regression, which is basically fitting a line to a plot. Uh, that is pretty much it. <clears throat> the next concept we're going to learn is logistic regression, which is a bit different. It's when there's only two possible types of points. There's, uh, if you break it down, it's uh, each point can either be a one or a zero, and logistic regression creates a line that separates the two, and uh, enables you enables you to classify which is which, or predict. Then we learn about KNNs, SVMs, K-means clustering. We'll go into all of these with more detail later. And finally, the last subject we're going to talk, uh, talk about is uh, neural networks. So, all of this is on our website. And you can look at our GitLab page, which is also on our website, for more information about that. <coughs> so, now that that's out of the way. So, we were talking about how... We were talking about integers and floating point numbers. So, I've shown that C is a floating point number because of the decimal, right? Now, you can multiply C by in another integer or another floating point number. Like, say I p said C is equal to, or actually no, D is equal to C times 2. And if I print the value of D, it's C times 2. Even though you're multiplying a floating point number by an integer, it still outputs the right value. Um, you can also multiply a floating point number by a floating point number. And you get something like this. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Now that we have that down, I mean, we've already shown how a few of these basic addition uh, operations in Python, but yeah. So the first operation we're going to cover is addition, which is pretty simple. Or I should probably print it. So yeah, addition uses the plus symbol like normal. And subtraction uses the minus symbol. That is all pretty self-explanatory. Um, you can also use division. And multiplication. So um, all of these, um, all of these operations in Python, these basic mathematical operations, they're all pretty self-explanatory. Nothing really too crazy here. You know, just uh, don't divide by zero, like always. You know, just the basic rules of math. If you follow those, you're good. <laughs> all right, and um. Alongside these, there are also an additional operations that, you know, aren't the four basic ones, they're all, but they're still pretty basic. So there is radicals, or exponents, I mean radicals. Forgot to print A. So B's value is, where is it, B is 8, so 8 squared is 64. Mm. 
you can also have integer division where, for example, okay, so when you're talking about integer division, you don't really have a decimal point after, it's just an integer no matter what after the operation happens. Like for example, if you do normal division for this uh, statement, you'll get 4.5, but if you do integer division, you just get four. Now the answer really is 4.5, but this uh, this operator uh, basically, it doesn't round it, it just cuts off the decimal point because it's casting it to an integer. So that is also pretty self-explanatory. Now the last one, Now the last one of these operations we'll be covering is the okay is the what's it called remainder operation. Oh my God, I forgot the word. So you know how when you divide stuff, there's a remainder. That's that's it. You know <laughs> the remainder of eighteen divided divide by four is two. Because four times four is sixteen, and then there's two left. You know, basic math. We all learned this in fourth or fifth grade. No, maybe even earlier. But you know what? Yeah, this is all just simple stuff. Um, now we get into another data type, another very important data type, actually, string. And I'm sure all of you guys are very familiar with this. A string is just a list of characters. Just yeah. So message is equal to hello world and yeah uh, you can print this message and you get hello world that's yeah you store a bunch of characters into a string and that's it then you can also use the single quotation marks it doesn't really make too much of a difference as long as you're consistent with it. Yeah, see? Mm. But if you have quotes within the string, like he said, hello world, using those single quotes would be a better idea. But it all depends on what you want to do. It's not, you're not really going to use this too much. It's just very, I mean, you are going to use strings a lot, but it's not the most important thing to learn at the moment, but it's good to know. And, you know, there's also a situation where you, if you want to use both kinds of quotes, then you could use the backslash. So, all right, I'll start off with this. You can use this. No, I did something wrong, didn't I? Oh, I'm dumb. Okay. Nope, I did something wrong. How does this work? Uh. Okay, wait. Ryan, message equals. Uh, message oh, equals I'm string. dumb. Okay, yeah, that's that's what I was missing. <laughs> this is why you're here, Rahi. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, cool. That's good to know. So yeah, he said hi. That's that's how you do. It. Okay. All right. Um. You can also add strings together. So, first name. Also, uh, by the way, this is important to know. Uh, the naming convention used in Python is not camel case, which is what you guys learned in Java. So, usually in Java, you would uh, name a variable like this, but that's not how you would do it in Python. In Python, you do uh, you just separate different words by underscores, and you don't capitalize it. It's just general naming conventions. So yeah, so first name is equal to Bob. 
You can use you can use camel case if you want, but um, convention in Python is just to use underscores. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can use whatever you want, but that's just the general naming convention. Yeah. So the last name is equal to his last name will be Bob too. So name is equal to first name. Name, what happened there? Okay. And oh, and you could press tab to autofill if you want. I mean that pretty much applies to any ID you use, but you can do that here in Jupyter Notebook as well. So that's nice. And there is a slight problem with this name in that it does just stick them together and not put anything in between, but you can easily fix that. And if you print out name, there we go, Bob Bob. Very nice. Oh, and you can't do this in Java, by the way, but you can also multiply strings. So you can say name is equal to first name times 10. Let's do that. And if you print name, you get 10 bobs. So that's that's cool to know. <laughs> um, you can also put the strings inside a print statement without needing to actually cast them to a variable. So you can just say hi everybody. And it'll print hi everybody without needing to store it in a variable. So yeah, um, you can print numbers, but we already did that, but just, you know, good to know. You can also, um, so say you have Bob, 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 how many, however many times, you can also set his age as, oof, he's over a thousand years old. Let's just, that's his age, you know? And um, you can also print both of them at the same time using commas and separate them with spaces. So that's convenient. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let me check for questions. Oh, yes, all right. Rai's taking every, care of everything in the Twitch chat. That's good. All right. Um, okay, so this is a very important a very important data type. So listen up, everybody. <laughs> so this is a Boolean. So Boolean, it's basically a zero or one, you know, true or false. It might sound pretty simple, but you'll use it a lot. Trust me. So let's just say you, we have an example like, I don't know. Can someone drive? This is coming straight off of the stuff on the GitLab page. So if you go on our website, you can look at what I'm looking at right now. But can drive is equal to false for our friend Jimmy here. Also, you need to capitalize false and true. So this variable is false right now. That they should be. Yes. Um. Yes, Anish uh, mentioned something very important. Uh, we are using Python 3, so any packages or anything like that that you use, they must be for Python 3. I don't think you'd really, yeah, for all those people who didn't install it using Anaconda and installed Python on their own time or installed it beforehand, just make sure you're using Python 3. You know, it'll be important later. Yeah, Python 2 is, Python 2 is deprecated now, so you typically want to use Python 3. Yep, exactly. Uh, yeah, so now let's say can drive is, now let's say um, little Jimmy has turned 16 and he got his license. So you could set can drive for, to true for Jimmy. And then if you print can drive, it's true. But in the hypothetical situation that little Jimmy 
uh, ran someone over with his car, then uh, he, he can't keep his driver's license anymore, you know? So, you can put it as not true, or not can drive. Not true is just a longer way to write false, but you could say that just reverse whatever he has right now. And then if you print that, it's going to be false. Wrong button. Oh, and by the way, I should have said this. It's shift enter to go ahead. So if you press shift enter, you'll run the block of code that you wrote. It's probably important. I should have mentioned that before, but yeah. Um, so if you... Now you could also um, make... Uh, mathematical operations into booleans or yeah this for lack of a better term for it yeah that's just making matter mathematical operations to booleans so let's say we have a variable called 15 is divisible so we put 15 remainder 3 is equal to 0 now that's true hopefully you know that by now but this is a true statement so if we print 15 is divisible that's gonna say true but if we say 4 it's gonna say false so you can have this here and yeah you can use that alright um this is also pretty important these are the yeah so we're gonna be covering lists right now so let's say we have a list called nums and we put the random completely random numbers one two zero one two three four that's it so right now you have a list now, how is this useful, you might say? Well, you can access any of these uh, indices anytime you want. Now, because of my convenient uh, placement of these integers in the list, it's pretty easy to know where everything is. Basically, this the number that you put here is how much it counts, but instead of starting from one, like people do, uh, computers start from zero. So zero refers to zero which is yeah and one if i put one it refers to one two refers to two three refers to three four refers to four now if i change it up a bit six seven three thirty six okay so if i put print num zero it is nope I, okay that's also a good thing to learn you have to run the code here before you're able to run the code, before that code, you know, works properly, you know, because Python is in, I forgot the word, but it doesn't run through all the code at once like Java does. It goes one step at a time. So if you have something, if you define a variable below, if you define a method below another method and you try to call the method that's below in the method above, it won't work. But in Java, it will. It's kind of hard to explain. Interpret, yes, yeah. Python is an interpreted language. It translates all the lines of code in order, while a language like Java goes through all of them at once, then translate them, or translates them all at once. Half compile. Yeah, we'll go into that later. I haven't, <laughs> I don't know the details about that, but yeah. Um, so print num zero, four. Uh, zero is the first value of the list, and that's four. So yeah, that makes sense. Uh, print nums two. That's seven. Seven is the third value of that list. Two refers to the third value, so that also makes sense. So everything's working fine. You can also replace values in a list individually. So let's say not six. Let's say I wanted to replace the fourth value with, because I don't like the number 30. Let's say I wanted to replace it with the number 31. Now if I print nums, 
there we go, 31 right here. So I can replace individual indices as well. All right. Um, now we're going to cover something that's similar to lists, but also kind of different. These are called tuples, where basically they're similar to lists, but you cannot change them like I did here. You can index them, but you can't you can't do anything else with them. So let's say I have immutable. Yeah, I I know what I'm talking about. I just don't know the words for it. <laughs> or at least I hope I know what I'm talking about. But yeah, it's an immutable list where you can't really change it afterwards. So um, x, y, and z, right? So five or twenty point. And then last one is 72 point something. I did not mean to put that Y there. So, um, so you can, uh, oh, I should probably put a print statement around this, but you can print specific indices and you can store specific indices in somewhere else. But if you try to cast it to something else like 15, there we go. It doesn't support object assignment. Once you've created it, that's it. That's the tuple. So that's the difference between them and lists. Also, you don't use the square brackets. You use the parentheses. Or, yeah, that's what they're called. Um, yeah, so let me check the Twitch chat. See if anybody has any questions. All right, no questions there. So the next type of uh, data, the next data type we're going to be covering is a set. So a set is basically a list, but it cannot be indexed. It only works based on the values that are there. So it's a bit hard to explain. Let me show you. So let's say you have a set with one, two, and three. By the way, it uses the curly brackets. So this looks pretty normal, right? Now, if you wanted to add, let's see, set one dot add. I wanted to add the number three, or actually no, there we go. I wanted to add the number four in here. There you go, one, two, three, four. Now, let's say I wanted to add the number four. Again, I wanted two number fours in there. Now, that's not possible. It's not gonna give me an error, but if I print it again, it's just gonna have one number four. You can only have one of each value. Each value in the set is unique. So, there's that. <laughs> and you can access them by, yeah. Wait, let me see. Give me a second. Let me check the Twitch chat. Yeah, so. Yeah, well, that's yeah, pretty much sets. You can print them, you can add values to them. And if you want, you could redefine like the set itself by, by you can add multiple, um, what you call it, multiple values to the set without having multiple lines of code by using update. So you can say, I want seven here, six, five, you know, really creative with the numbers I'm using, but there we go. Oh, you have all these numbers in here. Um, you can get the length of the set, which is how many values there are. So print set one dot len, or no, my bad. Len, yeah, this is still used to Java. Yeah, so there's seven values within this set. You can remove a value, so 
set one dot remove and let's say I didn't like the number four I remove it print set one that's it no number four in there and if the object you want to remove is not within the set it is going to give you an error so do be careful of that if you wanted to do it in a way where it wouldn't give you an error like okay let's say I wanted to remove number eight it would give me an error here but if this card does the same thing but if you wanted to remove something it doesn't make a difference so yeah that's it um, and that's pretty much all you need to know with the uh, sets. You can just do set one dot clear. I think that's it. Yeah. And then you print set one. And there you go. What is it? Yes. All right. Oh, we are nearing the end of our first meeting. That's awesome. Okay. So in the next meeting, we will go over dictionaries and inputs so yeah uh, oh yeah continue next time so i'll be teaching the next one uh we'll be finishing up uh the iterables and uh probably the rest of the data types and we're gonna get into uh, let's see we're gonna get into think comparison operators right mm -hmm. uh, yes. so yeah we're gonna get to the uh, so that's going to be the booleans. Uh, we're going to get further into that. We're going to learn if statements and everything like that. Um, but we'll probably get started on that. We might not be able to finish that. Yeah. So um, thanks for joining our first meeting. You know, uh, we'll post the link to the YouTube. Uh, the link to the YouTube. No, the link to the YouTube video. Um, in the resources uh, resources tab in the dis resources channel in the discord server and yeah we'll have some exercises in the GitLab, and we'll post that in resources as well but i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something uh thanks <laughs> uh see you guys next week <laughs>